Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to cover a very important theorem in the subject of topology that is Cantor's intersection theorem. Let us try to understand what is the statement, what is the meaning of this statement and after that we will prove this theorem. We have a matrix space XD which is complete. Complete means what? Every Cauchy sequence is convergent. So such a matrix space we have. We have a sequence of non-empty decreasing uh, sets, right? Fn. Each Fn is non-empty. This is a decreasing sequence that means F1 contains F2, F2 contains F3, F3 contains F4 and so on, right? Each set is closed, they have mentioned, it is each set is closed and D of Fn tends to 0, the diameter of Fn tends to 0 as n tends to infinity and we have to prove that intersection contains exactly one point. So this thing we have to prove. So what will I do? I will write all these things, all the given information one by one and then we will start the proof. We have, we have, the first and important information is XD is complete. So this is a complete matrix space. So therefore we get, if you have any Cauchy sequence, you can directly declare it is convergent because of this completeness. Second information is each Fn is non-empty. Okay, all sets are non-empty. This is true for all n belongs to set of natural number. The third information is Fn is closed for all n belongs to set of natural number. Each Fn, each set is closed. Fourth information is this is a decreasing sequence. That means F1 contains F2. F2 contains F3, F3 contains F4 and so on, Fn contains Fn plus 1 and so on. Okay, so this is a decreasing sequence of closed sets. What will I do? I will draw one small diagram so you can easily understand. So this is our matrix space XD. Okay, this is our matrix space XD. This is set F1. Okay, F1 contains another set F2. F2 contains next set F3, F3 contains next set F4, F5, F6, F7 and so on. Okay. In this way we have the next important information is D of Fn tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. Getting? So the diameter of Fn tends to 0. And what we have to prove? We have to prove that intersection of Fn and belongs to set of natural number contains exactly one point. Exactly one point. Okay, this thing we have to prove. We have to prove the intersection contains exactly one since we are getting a decreasing sequence of closed sets. Getting? So, we have to prove that the intersection contains exactly one point. Okay, so let us start to prove. So, the proof is a little bit constructive. I'm going to construct a sequence first, okay? We construct a sequence as follows, okay? So what I'm doing, I'm taking one point x1 from f1, okay? I'm taking one point x1, okay? Let me write here x1. See, x1 can be here also, here also, but uh, just I'm writing there only, okay? But it can be anywhere. Okay, logic will be same. X2 belongs to F2. X2 is in set F2, right? X3 belongs to F3. X3 will be here somewhere here. Okay, X3. And so on, Xn belongs to Fn. Okay, in this way, we are constructing a sequence, right? And so on. Okay, so in this way, we have got a sequence, okay? So one important thing, let me write here. Let us use this space. That important thing is clearly Fm subset of Fn for all m greater than or equal to l. Okay, so this is true. That means see what I want to say. F1 contains F2, F2 contains F3, F3 contains F4 and so on. So obviously F4 is subset of F2. Am I right? That means if this suffix is greater than that suffix, then you will have this kind of relation. 
so here m is greater than or equal to n so that's why i'm getting the same type of relation okay uh, but see you know xm belongs to fm obviously by uh, in this in the same way we have defined a sequence no so xm belongs to fm uh, but fm is subset of fn that means xm belongs to fn xm belongs to fm fm contained uh, contained in fn so that's why xm belongs to fn and obviously that xn belongs to fn by uh, by our construction so we get xm and xn both are li uh, lying in fn for all m greater than or equal to n okay this is so much important thing we have got so let me call it as one we are going to use it later right Okay, so now there is no more space to write, just make a screenshot of it, then I will go further. So in this way, we have constructed a sequence Xn, which is satisfying this thing also, this condition also. So now my target is to prove the sequence which we have constructed, it is a Cauchy sequence, this thing we are going to prove. Let me mention, now, we will prove that Xn is Cauchy okay with the help of epsilon definition okay I'm going to prove that sequence is Cauchy so let us take one epsilon first let epsilon greater than b greater than 0 be given okay so I have taken any arbitrary epsilon see one information we have that is d of fn tends to 0 that thing I'm going to use we have d of fn tends to 0 that means d of fn is a convergent sequence and it converges to 0 d of fn that means diameter of fn diameter of fn will be a real number so that means this is a convergent sequence of real numbers okay so by definition of convergent sequence i can write therefore for given epsilon epsilon we have already taken so for above epsilon greater than 0 there exists some natural number n such that by definition of convergent sequence i am writing mod d of fn minus 0 less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n right see this is a sequence of real numbers so that's why i'm using mod there d of fn minus 0 you will get d of fn and d means diameter which cannot be negative so that's why no need to apply mod i can simply write d of fn less than epsilon for all n greater than or equal to capital n that means whatever i have written it is true for all n okay but the condition is that n should be greater than or equal to capital n that means it is true for capital n it is true for capital n plus 1 n plus 2 n plus 3 and so on so in particular particular i can write d of f capital n that is also less than epsilon okay uh, this is okay or yes less than epsilon so let me mention it is 2 so let us use this space okay purposely i have kept this equation the statement number one here since we are going to use it now from 1, from 1 we can write xm xn belongs to fn, okay, fn, fn for all m n greater than or equal to capital N. Using statement number 1, I can write if m and n are greater than or equal to capital N, obviously all these numbers will lie in fn. Let us discuss one example. Suppose if I write f6, then obviously x7, x8, x10, x11, like that, all elements will lie in f6, getting, since we are choosing in the same way, because of our construction, definitely we can write in this way, and that's why I can write xn, xm belongs to fn, okay, see if, suppose, fn is like this, xm is here, xn is here, then distance between them is less than or equal to diameter of fn agree so that's why i can write distance between xm xn less than or equal to diameter of fn for all mn greater than or equal to capital n okay 
let me remove this one now see uh, let me call it as 3 so now uh, what will i do i will combine 2 and 3 from 2 and 3 so will you tell me what can we write from 2 and 3 in 2 we are getting uh, sorry in 3 we are getting d of xm xn less than or equal to d of fn and d of fn less than epsilon so that means a less than b b less than c so i can say a less than c so that's why it is less than epsilon i should carry this condition for all m and greater than or equal to capital n but see this is definition of cauchy sequence we have got so that's why we can say xn is a cauchy sequence therefore xn is cauchy in matrix space xd but see again we have very important information that xd is complete let me mention but xd is complete see complete means what every cauchy sequence is convergent if every cauchy sequence is convergent we say the matrix space complete and right now we have a cauchy sequence so that's why we can say it is also convergent therefore xn is convergent in xd if it is convergent it will converge to some point let us call it as x and xn converges to some point x in capital x say okay so we are considering it converges to some point it is convergent so it converges to some point we are calling it as x okay this is important thing we have got so let us uh, come back to the statement what we have to prove we have to prove that intersection contains exactly one point so now our next target is to prove this point lies in intersection okay see now to prove that now we will prove let me mention now we will prove x belongs to intersection fn n belongs to set of natural number okay just make a screenshot of it then we will go further uh, so now we have to prove that x belongs to intersection okay so let us try to understand with the help of diagram so such set f1 we have second set f2 right sorry f2 third set f3 next is f4 like that and we are choosing point like, like this x1 belongs to f1 x2 belongs to f2 x3 belongs to uh, f3 x4 belongs to f4 and so on so obviously where the sequence converges x okay it will lie in intersection so with the help of diagram we can easily understand but now we have to prove so for that what will i do i will fix my n first okay so let me write we fix we fix some n belongs to set of natural number we fix some n for example n is equal to 4 we can fix n is equal to 10 we can fix and then then xn xn plus 1 xn plus 2 and so on is a subsequence of original sequence xn okay for example so we have this original sequence x1 x2 x3 x4 and so on so we, we can simply start from x5 x5 x6 x7 and so on so this is a subsequence of original sequence xn since we have dropped first four terms so it is a subsequence you can easily see here x5 x6 and so on and clearly this all terms of a sequence lie in set f5 so here we can say subsequence xn and contained in contained in fn okay so let us go further but see we know that if the original sequence converges to x its subsequence will also converge to the same point let me mention but xn converges to x so therefore the subsequence that xn xn plus 1 x n plus 2 and so on will converge to same point x since the original sequence converges to x therefore let me mention therefore subsequence it is a subsequence so it will converge to the same point you are getting the 
original sequence means what original sequence i am writing xn in this way it means x1 x2 x3 and so on okay so this is the original sequence and sub sequence means we directly start terms from xn 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 plus 1 that means x1 x2 up to xn minus 1 we have drop all these terms and directly we are starting from xn so that's why we are calling it as a sub sequence original sequence converges to x so that's why sub sequence will converge to the same point so that's why i can declare therefore xn xn plus 1 xn plus 2 and so on is convergent in x converges so that's why we are saying it is convergent sequence that's it very simple logic uh, let us continue here okay see it convergent in x right but see but but all these terms xn xn plus 1 and so on belongs to fn all these terms are lying in fn so that's why we can say uh, just a minute huh yes see it is convergent in x before that i need to write convergent in x therefore that xn xn plus 1 and so on is Quachi in x. Tell me why. See, we know that every convergent sequence is Quachi, so that's why it is convergent, therefore it is Quachi in x. Reason every convergent sequence is Quachi. So now I will mention that thing. But all these terms xn, xn plus 1, xn plus 2, all these terms lie in fn. So that's why we can say it is Quachi in fn also. No any term is going outside. Let me show. This is matrix space xd. Okay, this is matrix space xd. This is set fn. This is set fn. That means outside it we have fn minus 1 like that. But we are fo focusing on just fn only. And we have xn, xn plus 1 xn plus 2 and so on so that's why all elements in fn so that's why we can say therefore that xn xn plus 1 xn plus 2 and so on is Cauchy in fn it's Cauchy in fn let me remove this part we had already declared it is Cauchy in x but all terms lies in fn so that's why we are saying it is Cauchy in fn okay so we have got a Cauchy sequence in fn but see one thing we have but but fn is close they are given no fn is close subset of a complete matrix space xd but see fn is a closed subset they have already given closed subset of what complete matrix space xd and there is one result closed subset of complete matrix space is complete so that's why we can say fn is also complete okay so therefore fn is complete See, fn is complete and we are saying complete means what every Cauchy sequence is convergent and we have a Cauchy sequence in fn therefore it is a convergent. Therefore that xn, xn plus 1 and so on is convergent in fn. You are getting the point? We have a Cauchy sequence in fn but fn is complete. Complete means what every Cauchy sequence is convergent so that's why this is also convergent in fn we have got a sequence which is convergent in fn wherever it converges that point lies in fn okay there is no more space to write just make a screenshot of it then i will go further see but we have already declared but but that subsequence xn xn plus 1 and so on that subsequence converges to x we have already xn converges to x original sequence converges to x so the subsequence converges to the same point x and we are saying it is convergent in f getting in f inside f and it converges to x it means therefore x belongs to fn getting we are saying the sequence converges converges in f in fn sorry in fn so that means where the point the sequence converges that point lies in fn so that's why we can say x belongs to fn 
and see n is any arbitrary no we don't know the exact value of n so that's why it is true for all n it is true for all n x belongs to fn it is true for all n that means x lies in x f1 x lies in f2 x lies in f3 x lies in f4 and so on that means x is present in all sets it means it lies in intersection therefore x belongs to intersection of fn n belongs to set of natural number okay so in this way we proved that x belongs to intersection but see there is one more point we have to prove that intersection contains exactly one point we have to prove that it has only one point we got one point but we should prove that there is no any other point in intersection okay that thing also we have to prove so therefore intersection of n belongs to set of natural number fn is non empty and contains some point contains some point okay so now we have to prove that it contains exactly one point okay just make a screenshot of it then i will go further so i have clearly mentioned we have to prove that intersection fn contains exactly one point only one point is there in mathematics when we want to prove anything we assume exactly opposite to that here also i will do the same i will assume let it possible there are two points okay let if possible let if possible xy belongs to intersection fn n belongs to set of natural number i am assuming there are two points x and y okay uh, let us see what will happen both points lie in intersection that means both are in every set therefore xy belongs to fn for all n belongs to set of natural number it lies in intersection that means both are present in each set right see i will draw the diagram suppose this is set fn this is x this is y both points lie in fn that means distance between x and y is less than or equal to diameter of that set okay so that's why i can write therefore d of xy less than or equal to diameter of fn right for all n belongs to set of natural number let us continue here okay let us continue here see d of xy what we have got d of xy less than or equal to d of fn okay distance which is obviously non negative greater than or equal to 0 and they are saying d of fn tends to 0 that means bounded below by 0 and bounded on, uh, above by d of fn which is moving towards 0 below by 0 and the bounded above is moving towards 0 that means obviously that d of xy is equal to 0 and tell me when we get to a distance between two points is 0 if both points are same then only distance zero agree so therefore x and y both are same that means we had assumed there are two points but finally we are getting these two points are not different both of them are same it means intersection contains exactly one point therefore intersection fn n belongs to set of natural number contains exactly one point hence the theorem hence the theorem in this way we have completed the proof of this very important theorem that is cantor's intersection theorem okay because screenshot of it then we will stop thank you